From the Weston A. Price Foundation, welcome to the Wise Traditions Podcast for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. We are your source for scientific knowledge and traditional wisdom to help you achieve optimal health. Welcome to Wise Traditions, Adam. Hilda, it's an absolute pleasure to be on the show. I love talking to you. You are radiating with health. You just had a baby about 10 weeks ago. And I want to invite people on your journey. Adam, when you had that aha moment, when you realized you were trying so desperately to get well, and then it struck you that it wasn't about adding things. It was about something else. Can you take us to that moment? Sure, sure. So very top line leading into uh, how I discovered the power of detoxification. Um, doing doing all the things that we should do. I was eating well, going to the gym. And, you know, I hit a health crisis. And I knew at the time, doctors are not for me, I'm going to do the holistic thing. And, I, and that's what I did. Uh, and, and just to summarize what those challenges were, there was uh, digestive issues. I mean, horrendous digestive issues, bloating, gas, uh, food sensitivities, the whole, the whole gambit. Um, anxiety as well kind of really crept in. And it was, it, it was a really interesting experience because I was like, I have nothing to be anxious about, but I'm just anxious mm -hmm. driving a car down a, a freeway, anxious, certain scenarios. And, and I was just like, never had this before, but the nail in the coffin, which made me take action was my hormones just tanked. So I, I remember getting my blood work done and I had the testosterone of, a, of an 80 year old and I was 31. I was like, something is not right because before that point I was, I, I enjoyed my youth. Let's just say that. So, <laughs> so that sent me down this path of, of practitioners. And I would say I learned from every single one of them, little pieces of the puzzle, but there, the, the people I worked with, it was all about it's similar to the pharmaceutical model as in diagnose and supplement your way out of it. So I was doing 20 pills per meal. I mean, I, I had, I was organized. I was like, right, I've got this, got this, got this. And I was, you know, because I was thinking something in this combination has to do something. Yeah. And then the turning point was when I started to just look at cleanses mm -hmm. and the penny dropped when I, I, I can't remember which particular cleanse it was, but I just felt a little bit better. And I was like, interesting i feel better just detoxing versus taking all these supplements and that just sent me down a rabbit hole of right what does detox look like and because I, I didn't really know i thought it, detox is like buy a juice cleanse you know i, I didn't know and then i just, it, i just opened up and just threw all of my energy into understanding what detoxification is how our organs work how the body uh, is really always detoxing but due to our environment and the amount of chemicals we are now exposed to i saw a stat the other day in the last 50 years we've they've released 80,000 different synthetic chemicals into our atmosphere uh, and 1500 of which are are known to be carcinogenic and it's crazy so i realized could it be my environment could it be what i've been exposed to and if so um is detoxing going to going to help me? And it slowly started to work. And then as I got that little bit of, oh, if there's something there, then I just jumped into all the different forms. And that really was the beginning of my recovery. Oh, so wonderful. And so we're right on topic. We let's start at square one there. You said when mm. the penny dropped and you were exploring what is detoxification yeah. and how does it benefit the organs? Can we start with that, Adam? Sure. So what's interesting is detoxification is a natural process of our bodies we're always detoxifying we're detoxifying through our sweat through our stool through our kidneys even through our breaths we, we are always detoxifying it's a part of the body's functioning to keep well and be healthy now some people might say oh, you don't need to detox like you know the body's well equipped and I would, I would actually agree with them, right? I, in, in certain circumstances, if you've got a great, great genetic setup, a strong constitution, you were breastfed from a young age, you've hardly had any antibiotics, you live in a very low EMF, low polluted environment, then amazing. I think you're going to do just great. I was the canary in the coal mine in some respects. I got unwell and a lot of my friends were doing fine at the time. Mm 
So we're always detoxifying. That's just a natural process of the body. But the challenge we now have is the environment in which we live in doesn't match up to our biology and our genetics. We are the same genetically as our hunter gatherer ancestors hundreds of thousands of years ago. And they didn't have to deal with the amount of toxicity in our environment. And to just give very top headline pointers on what those toxins are, it's metals, so heavy metals, it's chemicals, and there's an array of chemicals we can discuss. And the new kid on the block that kind of sprinkles over them is EMFs. Mm. They're, they're the main heavy hitters. There's other ones. There's obviously you know, glyphosate, which I'm sure you know the listeners are aware of. And there's even some natural toxins in nature like molds, uh, which release mycotoxins. But the three heavy hitters right now that even if we, you know, shut ourselves away in, in, a, in, a, in, our, in our nice, clean homes, you can't avoid these toxins. They are they're everywhere. So because that has changed our environment dramatically over the last 50 years, and especially in the last 20 years with 5G and everyone's got a phone on them. That has created an environment where our bodies cannot cope with the amount or the body burden of what we're taking in. And again, as I said, it depends on, could be genetic factors. Do you have any genetic mutations that maybe you don't detoxify as well? I certainly had them. Do you live in a busy, polluted city or do you live in the country? That can impact it. Uh, how many antibiotics have you had? Where you, I, I have a friend and, um, we were talking about digestive health and, he's, and he's, he's actually from New Zealand and he's like, mate, never have any issues with my digestion, never. And I was like, really? He goes, well, yeah. I mean, it might be because my mother breastfed me till I was four years old and he can actually remember. And I was like, he's like, yeah, I have memories of breastfeeding. But because he was breastfed until he was four, he says his digestion is bulletproof. You know, I was, I was breastfed till I was six weeks. Uh, so again, there's all different reasons behind it, but what we're now seeing is younger and younger generations are getting sicker earlier because they're growing up in a more toxic environment. So I got my first mobile phone when I was 17 and it would have been like 2G. Now they're getting their phones at 9, 10 and it's full 5G. So you can see there's just more going on and with microbiome health, you pass on what you've got so the you know as we have weaker microbiomes so you can see it's oh, yeah. it's the perfect storm for people not to be able to deal with the modern environment so yes. and i used to feel like you did adam i thought the body is well equipped if mm. we're well nourished and doing all the things getting the sunshine getting our feet on the ground you know we're going to be yeah. fine but i suddenly realized as you did that this today's environment is very different from mm -hmm. that of our ancestors. And so we might need to do therefore some more serious detoxification protocols than they did because we're, as Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride puts it, mm -hmm. we're swimming in a toxic soup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, what we're trying to do. So you talk about grounding sunshine. I, th I put them all on the same level as detoxification because ultimately what we're trying to achieve is the right environment and conditions that our ancestors lived in. So we need the sun. We need the grounding. We need the spring like water without the heavy metals, the chemicals, etc. And we need a, we need a body. We need a vessel that is clean and can function. So all of this stuff essentially is trying to mimic our ancestral heritage really. So I, I put, you know, and when I, you know, through my teachings and education, I put, you know, grounding and sunshine and all of that stuff is on par with detoxification. But I think the, 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 the kind of narrative of detox uh, now is seeming to get a lot more focused now because people are looking for answers. It's like, oh, these things aren't working. And, and, and as I said, from my story, from practitioner to practitioner, and then it was, and really, it was myself who was able to, to bring myself back. And it was all just re realizing it's got to be about detox and cleansing the body. And as I said, aligning ourselves to our ancestral heritage. Yes. And I guess that's why, honestly, I've been a little wary of some of the more dramatic detoxing mm. protocols. And I, I hope we can talk about the gamut today so from the yeah, simplest yeah. Uh, to the most 
challenging perhaps. Yeah, I've been a little bit wary because I'm like, gosh, it, it seems so intense. Um, so let's just take it bit by bit before we go to mm. the, the heavy hitters. Mm -hmm. I know there are simple things like you mentioned already sweating, right? There were yeah. sweat lodges in Native American communities. I know in, in some ancient Mexican cultures, they did the temazcal ceremony, again, an opportunity to let the sweat pour out in a very dramatic fashion, I would say. Um, and in some ways in the U.S. with our little saunas and our even Epsom salt baths, we're drawing, we're doing our best to draw toxins out. Are those good places to start, would you say? Yeah, so there's there's many different uh, degrees of detoxification. And really what I want to promote is daily detoxification. I want to decode detox because once you understand it and you understand the process of how the body functions, uh, really it, it comes down to daily habits. So yes, saunas. I, I love saunas. I promote them regularly. I read a study recently that um, using the sauna five days a week reduced all cause mortality by 40%. I mean, that blew my mind because you can see why it's cardiovascular workout. You're sweating out all the toxins. So saunering is a really good entry level way to detox. I just say to my, uh, my clients, friends and family, you go to the gym. Great. Just jump in the sauna Just after 20 minutes. Just quick pop in the sauna. Also now there's, some, there's, some, there's a lot of cheap home sauna units where you kind of zip yourself up in these little bags and these sauna blankets. I, I, I myself have an actual sauna at the back of my garden, have an infrared, um, but it's a really entry level way to get detox into your life. Uh, and you also said detox baths, you know, Epsom salts, um, magnesium flakes, uh, you know, there's all different types of ingredients you can put into these baths that will just gently cleanse the body. And again, these things you can just bake into your routine. There's not, it, it doesn't require much. It's just right. Okay. Wednesday evening, it's my time. I'm going to jump into the bath and relax and read a book or, or whatever. So there's some really good entry level things you can do. Other things you can do is like moving the lymph. So, um, you know, rebounders are really good. Uh, I appreciate not everyone has a rebounder. If the gym has a rebounder, amazing. Um, the lymph has no pump, but you know, a really easy way of moving lymph is walking or skipping. We, I think you guys call it jump rope in the States. We call it skipping here in the UK. So again, I'm like, buy a skipping rope. And, and, and a lot of people are like, I don't know how to do it. And I'm like, listen, I was there just do five minutes every day for 30 days and you'll be an expert. You know, little things like that are really good for moving the lymph. Uh, dry brushing as well is a, is a way of moving the lymph flow. So there's loads of nice, easy entry level things we can do. And also just in terms of dietary changes, we can we can help with detox. So one of the challenges, which I'm sure you'll be aware of, is the quality of our food today isn't as nutritious as it was, you know, 50 years ago. So the vitamins and minerals in a carrot aren't the same as what it was, you know, 50 years ago. So we have less minerals in our food. And why is that? Because of the way we're farming the land, monocropping, and we have less minerals. At the same time, we have an increase of heavy metals in the environment. Now, metals and minerals, they kind of work that they're similar in the body. So when a mineral goes into the body, it binds to a cell receptor site. And that's how that's when the mineral can be used. Now, in the absence of minerals, heavy metals like to bind there as well. So because we've got less minerals, more heavy metals, we're, that's why we're having these heavy metal issues because the body will use what it can. So for example, if you lack in zinc, the body will use cadmium in its place. Not the best option, but I'll use it. Cadmium's from smoking. So that's another challenge. So what can we do there? Well, if we increase our mineral intake, that in its own right is a good, nice, slow entry level detox because the more minerals you take in, you'll push those heavy metals out because the body's like, okay, I don't need these metals anymore to do these functions. I can release them and push them out. So we can get more minerals by making good bone broth or ideally meat stock. That's where the money is a good meat stock, which is the gelatinous kind of jelly, jello like. Um, adding in trace minerals, organ meats, having 
sea vegetables. That's where you get a lot of minerals. Uh, and that's something you can do every day, just adding some mineral drops to your water. And that will that will just flood your body of minerals and will push out those heavy metals. So they're, they're really easy entry level ways to detox. That makes me so happy because I don't want any listener to be as intimidated as I have been at the thought of some mm. of the detoxing protocols. But I want to go back to something you said a moment ago, Adam. You said, I want to decode detoxing. So mm. can you really break it down when you came across what its purpose was and yeah. what its result is? What did you find? So it, it wasn't, it didn't drop in like one go. It was over, I would say over a couple of years, I started to piece it all together. Because I was like, oh, what about this detox and, and that detox? And then you find, an, it's like health is a rabbit hole. Holistic health is the biggest rabbit hole you'll ever go down. And it's the most rewarding when you understand it. But I realized that detoxification was important because if the vessel is toxic, we cannot function. You cannot, you can take all the supplements in the world. They will not be absorbed and utilized if your vessel isn't clean. So as I started to detox, I realized I started to have improvement in my symptoms. And then it kind of went to this, went to a place where I surpassed where I was previously. So now my digestion health is better than it was in my twenties and in my teens, because I've continued on that journey. So it was understanding, uh, detox was key, but then there was a process to it, right? So for example, some people might be like, oh, I've got heavy metals. I'm heavy metal toxic. I'm going to do one of those big heavy lifting, heavy metal deep, uh, protocols. Now, what I've now learned through my just being obsessed and learning and studying is there's a way to approach detox. You know, the heavy stuff you don't jump into straight off the bat. The main things you need to do is open up what we call the detoxification pathway. There is a way in which toxins enter the body and stay in the body. Normally they, they like to st like to hang out in fat cells and fat tissue or in the bone. So that's why we get like mercury in the brain when we have amalgam fillings, etc. And then it goes into the organs through the lymph into the liver and, and, and bile, and then into the colon. So when the, the first thing is understanding there is a, a funnel or a pathway of how toxins leave, and you need to optimize those before you do any heavy lifting. So if you're going to do a parasite cleanse or you're going to do a heavy metal cleanse, have to get your pathways flowing. And the easiest way for that to be, to be working is, are you pooping every day? And you'd be surprised the amount of people that don't poop every single day, right? Ideally once or twice a day. So you've got to get that working and that requires dietary changes, lifestyle changes. And once that's flowing, then it's like, okay, now we can start looking at all the other, other pieces of the puzzle. Um, you know, it yeah. reminds me of what a chiropractor friend of mine said one time. He said, our job as chiropractors is to remove, remove obstacles from the body's healing process. Yeah. In other words, good health is our birthright and the body knows what it needs to do. And mm. you're just trying to take kind of uh, the traffic jam out of those detox pathways so that the body can do what it's supposed to do. It wants to do it. It's on your side. It's not against you. So what can be removed to make space for the healing processes to flow. And that's yeah. sounds like what we're trying to achieve here. Yeah. And, and when you understand what we are exposed to and what we accumulate. So just to touch on some of the chemicals uh, you have, you know, and, and a lot of your listeners will be aware of these like BPAs by bisphenol A and you, you know, you get these BPA free bottles, but they're just changing out for BPA E or D or C, um, they're in receipts and, 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 and bottles, uh, coffee cups. Now the, they're not as bad as some other chemicals because they've got a half life of about four hours. So they'll actually pass through the body relatively quickly. However, it's the constant accumulation. So we're never really getting rid because we're constantly like loading them up. If you're having a, a, a Starbucks coffee every day or a couple a day, you're never really ridding that out of the body. Uh, you've got phthalates and parabens, similar type of uh, play in terms of how long it stays in the body. But again, it's consistently rubbing lotions on our skin and 
you know it's even used in food preservatives and it's it's food packaging it's always there but one of them which i think is is of real interest for me is these pfas and these are for, forever chemicals now they don't leave the body they, they like to hang around in the body so i think most people know it's teflon pans it's things that are, are stain resistant water resistant anti crease you know that lovely shine uh a lot of the listeners will know about ddt and it was banned in 1972. Mm -hmm. ddt is still found in the blood of people today because it's a forever chemical it's forever so these things don't just disappear these things don't just disappear they last forever in our environment and we will constantly accumulate them so the good news is we can remove them. That's the body, you know, with the correct detoxification protocols, we can remove these chemicals out of the body. But that just astonished me when I realized, and there, there are over 9,000 different variants of, uh, variations, sorry, of these forever chemicals. They're, they're in everything. They're in our clothes, uh, in our, you know, makeup and any, anything that has a shine to it or a gloss, it's there. <laughs> or if it says flame retardant, like yep. I used to think, oh, how great. They have flame retardant pajamas for our children. So if a fire breaks out, they won't catch on yeah. fire. Not realizing the chemicals in that fabric is so damaging to their young yeah. little mm -hmm. endocrine systems. But anyway, okay, so you've given us the picture. We get the idea. I'm so thankful mm -hmm. um, that our bodies know what to do once we make space and help clear these pathways if we're ready for the next level, you've mm. already talked about some simple entryways into detoxing that don't sound too intimidating. If we're ready for the next level, what would you suggest would initiate us into a more challenging cleanse that could be even better for our health? Sure. So there are, there are varying degrees on depending on which part of the, your body you want to work on. So I'd always say the colon is a good place to start. We looked at the detoxification pathway. The colon has to be uh, free to flow and for regular bowel movements to occur. So water enemas are a great kind of next level step up. Uh, water enemas have been used even as way back as the Egyptians as a part of health and healing. And it's a great way to rid the body of toxicity. Here's a, here's a pro tip for everyone. Now, now when I first did enemas, I was like, I don't want that going anywhere near where it has to go. Right. But, I, but once I did it, it was like, is that it? That's, that's fine. And, and now it's, it's like riding a bike, but here's the thing. If you have a, if you have a headache and you can't shift this headache and you don't want to take any medications or whatever, do a water enema and watch that headache disappear. Because any any form of symptom we get normally boils down to a toxicity load in our environment or, or in us. And when you cleanse the colon, you lower that load in the body and you will that headache will disappear. So that's, that's just a little pro tip there. So enemas are really useful and there's many different types of enemas. Water enema is the entry level. Um, you can do uh, chamomile enemas. That's that's quite soothing. Um, and obviously one which we've all heard of is the coffee enema. So uh, different, different um, end result. A coffee enema is, is about focusing on the liver, which would be the next kind of level up. Uh, so you would, you would insert coffee into the colon to uh, trigger the liver to dump bile. So there's the, he the hepatic portal vein that's connected to connect the large intestine to the liver. And when coffee goes up there, the, uh, the pomatic acid and the caffeine trigger or stimulate that portal vein, goes to the, the liver and tells the liver to start releasing bile. And bile is the most underrated part of health, in my opinion. And, and, and the reason I say that is because no one talks about it. Bile does so many different things in the body that it, it's, it's the most underrated thing. I, I, I really feel that. So obviously bile is to help digest fats. We know that. Um, 
But the challenge is a lot of people have congested livers and congested bile flow. And when you have congested bile flow, I'll tell you a couple of things that can manifest. Firstly, people can start getting SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Bile is the best, is mother nature's best detergent. So when you're regularly releasing bile, that goes through your digestive tract and just kills everything. So I, and I, and I said, it's because I had SIBO. I was doing all the tests, breathing to the tubes and, oh, this is high and that's high. And I was doing all the diets, um, low FODMAP and, and they all have their place. But when I fixed my bile flow, all of it went away. So bile is really important in that respect. And another thing I want to ponder as well is, and again, from personal experience and client experience, but we all get the low stomach acid scenario. And if you go to allopathic land, it's you've got too much because you're getting acid reflux and take the, the Tums or whatever. But if we go to functional world, it's your stomach acid's low. So let's have some apple cider vinegar. Let's do some bitters and stimulate the, the, the stomach acid before. Now, I think that's really good. But is that solving the root cause of the problem? Now, I would say the root cause is lack of bile flow, because I think the body is constantly trying to keep us safe. And if the body recognizes bile flow is lowered, it will lower stomach acid because stomach acid plus bile creates chyme in the small intestine for absorption. So I, I think stomach acid, low stomach acid is a byproduct of low bile flow. And when you fix the bile flow, the stomach acid is also fixed. Again, that is that is from my, that's from testimonials and my theory. But again, people who've had stomach acid issues, um, it's normally, from my experience, a bile flow issue at its root cause, which is a congested liver. So fascinating. Now you're mentioning using the enema to kind of get the bile flowing and get the mm -hmm. liver cleansed. I've also heard that they're really even, this is probably next level, greater liver cleanses that look super dramatic to me. And I think yeah. you've even done mm -hmm. them, right, Adam? Yeah. So, so again, for each, for each organ, there are different kind of grades, right? So we talk about the colon, you can, you can do, so we'll finish on the colon, move on to the liver. Yes, so, we'll so it. colon, you could start with like a salt flush, which is just drinking water and salt and that'll clear things out. Then you can move up to a water enema. Then you can move up to a coffee. And there's all different uh, degrees. Yeah. And then you've got the liver. So liver flushing is by far probably the biggest heavy hitter in terms of creating, uh, creating rapid change in someone's health. I, I do stress there's no magic bullet and a liver flush is part of an overall detoxification strategy like detox is part of an overall health strategy. So we talked about the grounding and the sun. There's no magic bullet, but liver flushing definitely is, uh, has the biggest bang for buck. Just to talk about what are some lower level entry uh, pieces for the liver. So you might look at herbs. So milk thistle, dandelion root, that's some nice entry level ways of trying to help your liver. Uh, you could then look at castor oil packs, which are a nice way of stimulating the liver to detox. Then we've just talked about coffee enemas. That's a, that's a that's another level up. Then the top of the tree is liver flushing, and uh, that was created by a gentleman called Andreas Moritz, and he wrote the book The Amazing Liver and Gallbladder Flush. And essentially, what this protocol is is, well, I don't even think he invented it. I think he, he he took it from actually ancient tradition. So he took it from like, uh, he used to live in, in Greece and, and would see that when mothers, uh, when, when small children were sick, the mothers and grandmothers would give their children olive oil and lemon juice in in, in, in certain amounts. So he, he took that kind of narrative and created a protocol. And, and essentially what it is doing is we are freeing our livers of the congestion that has built up due to the toxicity within our environments. So what, what builds up in the liver? What we get are um, intrahepatic gallstones. 
And that coin was uh, phrased by John Hopkins University. Intrahepatic gallstones are gallstones are they're, they're either they're green, they could be green, red, yellow, and they're made out of cholesterol and bile salts. Now we've heard of like gallstones in the gallbladder. You also get calcified gallstones. They're the hard ones that you'll pick up on on scans, and they they normally reside in the in the gallbladder, but most gallstones, whether they're calcified or non-calcified or intrahepatic, are in the liver. So why did they get there? And the reason is toxins, as we've said, these PFAs, BPAs, heavy metals, all these different toxins are entering our body, right, either through our digestive system, our skin, through the air, and they land in the blood and they go through the blood and then they land in the liver. And when they get to the liver, the liver says, right, I don't recognize this toxin it's not part of my wiring my my hunter gatherer genetics doesn't recognize this toxin i don't know what to do with it right now so i'm going to store it and and protect my t- protect the body and i'll wrap it in bile salt i'll wrap it in cholesterol and i'll, and I'll just store it here so it's it, we're safe the toxin is not exposed because we've, we've wrapped it up and i'm going to store it for safekeeping now over years or months and years and decades those stones accumulate and they accumulate and they accumulate till eventually a liver is congested. And when a liver is congested, bile flow and the the, the liver makes about a quart of a quart of bile a day, that starts to be impacted. So then bile flow is impacted, digestion's impacted, and then there's a cascade of poor health. So a lot of people, well, I would say everyone has congestion of our livers. And I heard a stat recently that I think it was a a third of US children had early stages of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I heard that too. Yeah. And again, that's the congestion of from the seed oils and the chemicals. So when we do this process of liver flushing, where it's drinking olive oil and lemon juice in certain amounts, um, we, we dilate the bile ducts prior with Epsom salts. We drink that. And there's, there's a preparation week. When you drink the olive oil and lemon juice, that that stimulates the liver to dump a huge amount of bile in one go. And with that kind of suction process, it pulls those stones and that sludge and congestion from the liver. And the next day you would do it at night and the next day you would poop out these green stones and sludge. And, and so... What that does, that, does that, that in itself isn't a healing modality. What that does is gives the liver the ideal environment to do its job. So it's not, it's not actually healing you. It's just saying, right, we're, we're putting the liver back to as, as good as it was uh, when you were younger or, you know, whatever. It, it, it creates the ideal scenarios for that liver to function correctly. And then as a result, people start to have miraculous healing because the liver can now do its job. Well, I think this is so fascinating, and I'm so glad you've mentioned some of the resources that helped guide you as mm. you've become this detoxification expert and experienced it with yourself, the benefits, and for your clients. But I want to ask you, is there such a thing, Adam, as detoxing too much? Because I have a friend right now who's doing coffee enemas every single day, mm. and I can't help but wonder, is that overkill? So as I said, we are detoxing every single day naturally, but can we proactively detox too much? I think we can. I think there's a balance to be had. We talked earlier about minerals and minerals are the spark plug of our metabolism. Detoxification is is taxing on our bodies. So for example, you wouldn't do a liver flush every single day. You would do one every three to six weeks. The body needs to recoup and recover. So some people, you know, if they feel they want to do enemas, et cetera, every day, then, you know, if, if that works for them, that works for them. I wouldn't recommend that purely because we have to think about the microflora in the gut and we have to give that time to replenish and thrive. So, and also coffee enemas can be addictive because of the caffeine hits okay. if, you, if you're not too careful. Yeah. So you, I, I say you can overdo it. There's a, again, you have to, Go for it, detox, and then rest and replenish. And you rest and replenish by eating nourishing foods, 
getting rest, getting sunshine, getting grounding, because then you want to go again for, for the next round. So any of the protocols that I take people through, there's a lot of rest in between because you, you can do more harm than good if you're just go, go, go uh, at detoxing. Because again, I think everything is, is cyclical, cyclical, right? We want to rest to digest and then go for it. And it's the same with detoxification. We, we don't want to go crazy uh, all the time. And we want them to be successful as well. So, yes, we we can go too hard. Uh, so it's about it's it's also about understanding where we are on the journey. So if, for example, say you do your first liver flush, you might have uh, some real Herxheimer reactions afterwards because you've never done it before, and your body isn't used to this amount of toxins being dumped into the system. I've done now over a hundred flushes in my time and i can tell you the more you do the, the your body gets better at detoxifying and and knowing the toxins are coming out and getting rid of them quicker and also you learn how you best cope so something we haven't talked about is binders it's a really big part of detoxification so you know there are there are binders for any there are binders for metals there are binders for chemicals there are binders for molds and the longer on the journey you go, you realize certain binders and certain combinations of binders can alleviate a lot of the symptoms as well. So yes, you can detox too much. It's about doing it in a, in a nice, easy way. And so you, you don't get too depleted because again, we, we've got to have the energy to detoxify. Oh my gosh, absolutely. So I'm hoping that people can follow up with you. We'll definitely put a link in the show notes to your website and so forth. So people can maybe get more specifics either on a liver flush or the binders you just referenced mm -hmm. and um, other protocols for detoxing, maybe guidelines. Uh, do you have some stuff like that available on your site? Oh, yes. I mean, I've got loads of stuff available on. If they check out my Instagram feed. There's loads of content uh, on there as well. And there's if you go to the, my website, there's a couple of freebies as well. There's a, there's a liver flush uh, freebie that they can download. So and I, I also have a detoxification group called the Detox Blueprint. So there's there's a lot of information out there online for me giving uh, advice on detox and where to start. Because as we said, it's it's complicated when you when you know you need to do it, but you don't know where to start. And you and you, you're thinking, oh, that's that. Because you know, I know a lot of people get a bit nervous about liver flushing, but once they've done them, they're like, oh my god, that was amazing. And that's, is that it? It's like, yeah, that's it. You know, <laughs> that's so great. Well, I feel like you have decoded detoxing for us, Adam, and I'm really grateful that you've shared your experience and that of your clients. And again, the resources, I'm, I'm thrilled about it all. And I want to pose to you the question I like to pose at the end here. If the listener could do one thing to improve their health, it could be related to detoxing or perhaps not, but if they could just do one thing to improve their health, what would you recommend that they do? I would say take responsibility for your health. And, and to be fair, I think the majority of the listeners will already do that. But I think with that switch, when I see that switch in people, because people who come to me don't fully have that on board. And when they realize the empowerment you can have when you know you can heal yourself if you have the right information is amazing. So I, I think it's, it, so it's that switch of owning it and being like, I am my best doctor. I will, I will solve this problem. And again, when you empower yourself with the right knowledge, it's the best thing in the world because you you know you can protect yourself, you can protect your family, and you view life through a completely different lens. So I'm 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 big on responsibility and not just on health and detox and everything. It's like empower yourself, educate yourself because when you know better, you do better, and it starts with that responsibility perspective on how you take on life. Love it, Adam. Thank you once again. It was great having you. Thank you, Hilda. It's been an absolute pleasure.